Okay, so um, <clears throat> last time they did standard normal distribution and normal distribution also. The key thing to note is probability x less than or equal to x is denoted by uppercase v of x. Lowercase v would simply be the density. So we can find this probability correctly using your calculator. In your calculator, if you're looking for a normal probability, it is normal CDF. It is always going to give you that area below. So negative infinity, negative E99, X followed by the mean and the standard deviation. If mean is zero, standard deviation is one, then it would become a standard normal, and there is only one standard normal. So, So we want to find phi of one, phi of two, phi of three. In other words, we are simply finding the probability x is less than or equal to some value. So we are simply trying to find the cumulative probability. So how do we find, well, if you can't visualize what this is, I would recommend that you do this, not just for a normal, for any distribution. If you can draw things out, you would understand the concept better. So what we're trying to find here is uppercase V of one. In other words, the probability Z less than or equal to one. I'm trying to find the area under that curve. That curve is the density of a standard normal, which I believe I wrote last time. In the general form of a standard normal distribution, as you said, mu to be zero, standard deviation sigma to be equal to one, you'd end up getting this. So when I say find phi of one, I'm trying to find that area. So if you have your calculator, go ahead and grab it. Yes. I have a calculation for one Yeah. You do? Yep. Okay. So one is 0 0.8413. It's 0 0.9772. And three is 0 0.998. Sounds about right. So the you should know this if you, you know, 2023. We went over this, right? But you have an inspire calculator. So if to get that funky E in your TI calculator, you would have to press second comma. So if you press second comma, you'll get that E. So negative second comma 99 followed by one, then mu, sigma. Mu in this case would be zero, sigma is one. You plug that in, you get the probability as 0 0.8413. 
0.9772 and 0.9977. So maybe two. Did, did you get to this point normal CPA? Normal CPA. Good. So negative. Second comma. Comma is right about the seven button. 99. Comma. X value, let's pick one. Yeah. Mean zero, standard deviation one. I have value for minus one degrees. It had no snow before we get to that. But how did you find it? I took one minus as probable. Very good. That is the right way to do it, at least in this class. This is a property that I wrote last time. It's satisfied by a normal distribution. Phi of minus one would simply be one minus phi of one. Phi of minus two, one minus phi of two. Phi of minus three, one minus phi of three. So if you subtract from the quantities, what do we end up getting? Uh, 0 0.1587, 0 0.022, 0 0.0022, 0 0.0022, 0 0.0022, 0 0.0022, 0 0.0023. Good. So those are the probabilities. Now that I have the feed ones, which simply means, oh, excuse me, the fees, they're just the cumulative probabilities. Sure, I could write it using uppercase F notation, but phi is a standard notation for normal, and normal is one of the important distributions in statistics. So we like to use phi. We know phi one, phi two, phi three. We have phi minus one, phi minus two, and phi minus three. I want you to find Absolute value of Z less than one, absolute value of Z less than two, and absolute value of Z less than three. Everything you need to find that is here. That's my hit. So, um, one of the properties of CDF, we know this is only the one to find the probability between two values. For some random variable x, we take the CDF of x, upper limit b, minus CDF, lower limit. Right? That's going to give you the answer. So that's OK. Now, in general, probability of absolute value of z less than z would simply be equal to phi of z minus phi of minus z. Now, why is that? The case. So, it, normal distribution is symmetric. So, if I'm going to go for the same distance on either side, let's say it's set over here, same over there, 
And when I say probability of absolute value of Z is less than Z or less than or equal to, what I mean to say is that the random variable lies between negative Z and Z. In other words, I'm finding the probability between the two values, yes? And if you go back to what we know about any CDA or uh, any random variable, not necessarily normal, it is always the CDF evaluated at the upper endpoint minus the CDF evaluated at the lower endpoint. When it comes to normal, we denote the CDF by uppercase P. So V of upper endpoint minus V of lower endpoint. Good. So this would simply be V of Z minus V of minus Z. So the answer here would simply be V of one minus V of minus one. So 0.8413. Sorry, right in a separate line here. C of one minus C of minus one. And what do we get? Point eight four one three minus point one five eight seven equals point six eight two seven. Point six eight two seven. Between minus two and two. This would simply be V of two minus V of minus two. So 0.9772 minus 0 0.0228. And what do we get? 0 0.9545. 0 0.9545. And lastly, So V of three minus V of minus three, and that would equal to 0 0.9987 minus 0 0.0013, and what do we get? 0 0.9973. Nine, okay. Those three numbers should look familiar to you. From 2023. Very good, Mary. It is the empirical rule of normal distribution. So within one standard deviation, we'll have 68% approximately. Two standard deviations, approximately 95%. Three standard deviations, approximately 99.73%. Yes. So is the another way of saying standard deviation or is it not? It's in this in this case, it's just the values, not just the standard deviation. Right? The value and the standard deviation. It, it's the value on the axis. I think you're confusing um, Z with the standard deviation, because the standard deviation in this case is exactly one. And I'm just moving in steps of one. But 
the value of z and the standard duration are not one and the same. Okay, so what is z? Um, z is just a score, it's just a standard normal score. It is a random array. Just like x. So when, when we're asked to find the probability of z, how do we know what to find? So anytime you see the letter of the case set, it simply means it is a normal distribution with mean zero and variance one, always. That is a given. Good. And that's how I know what density to use and what to use in the calculator and so forth. So uppercase B typically will refer to a standard normal distribution, the CDM of a standard normal distribution. Now, let's say I want to have a different normal distribution. Suppose X is just a normal distribution. It has some mean, it has some standard deviation. So, there is a one-to-one -one relationship between a Z score and an X value. So, we know the formula Z is x minus mu over sigma, correct? If I rearrange this and I wrote or solved for x, I'll end up getting x is equal to mu plus sigma times z. Agree? Yes. So, Then to erase the side. Expectation of a standard normal random variable is always zero because the mean is zero. The variance of a standard normal random variable is one because we know that about a standard normal um, variable. But if I take any other distribution other than a standard normal, we can simply obtain it by shifting and scaling the z score. That's all I did. I shifted by mu, damn it, I erased this. So from zero, if I added mu to it, I'm no longer at zero, I'm at mu, right? So all I have to do is to shift the standard normal random variable and scale it by a tiny bit, and that tiny bit would be the standard deviation, so that I get a different normal distribution. So if I take X as any normal distribution, expectation of X would equal to expectation of mu plus sigma times z. Yes? Linear scope expectation, expectation of mu plus expectation of sigma times z. What is expectation of mu? What? She says zero. No, mu is a constant. What is the expectation of a constant? constant? It'll be the constant itself, so mu. Sigma is a constant, so if I pull that out, sigma 
multiplied by expectation of z. And expectation of z is zero, sigma times zero, zero, mu plus zero, mu. Good. So if you have a random variable that has a normal distribution, but with some mean that is not zero, that mean will simply be mu. Likewise, variance of x. Sure, I can sit and integrate this, find the second moment, integrate using expectation and the density. That is going to be painful. So I can simply use the transformation that I have for x. x is nothing but mu plus sigma times z. What is the variance of mu? Zero. So if you have a constant plus a random variable, this would simply be equal to just the random variable part because the constant, the variance of that constant would be zero. Um, I'll just simplify this. Properties of variance, sigma squared. Good. Sigma squared multiplied by variance of z. The property, one of the properties of variance is that if you pull sigma out of variance, you would get sigma squared. So sigma squared multiplied by variance of z. We know for a standard normal that variance is one. Sigma squared times one, we end up having sigma squared. So if something is bell shaped with mean zero, standard deviation one, then it is a standard normal. If it had a mean that is anything other than zero, same mu or different variant sigma, then we can simply conclude that X is normal. the main mu and varying sigma squared. So for this random variable, the expectation is mu, variance is sigma squared, standard normal distribution, expectation is zero, variance is one. Good. But thank you.